we've managed to get all the way through this morning without anybody saying the words hack it review. So I'm going to say a little bit about that right now. Clearly, the events at Grenfell were an appalling tragedy. Um, but I think, without exception, everybody I've talked to in this industry involved with fire enhancement of timber products has seen a, a huge increase in, in both inquiries, but questions about the process and, and concern about quality uh, in the wake of, of Grenfell, even though there was no timber involved, obviously, in that particular uh, situation. Um, specifiers, users, distributors, everybody is asking questions. Not least, um, the regulator. And uh, the Hackett report actually says uh, that the current system of building regulations and fire safety is not fit for purpose and that a culture change is required to support the delivery of buildings that are safe both now and in the future. And um, I don't know if you watched much of the media reaction to the launch of the, the Hackett review. I felt uh, Dame Judith Hackett got a really uh, poor reception in the press because, um, as I said earlier on, this, there, this is a techie subject. There is terminology that you need to understand. Hopefully this morning has been helpful in that respect. But there is a, a tendency in the media, and we need to be careful we don't fall into the same trap in the industry, to oversimplify things and, and to take a tick box approach to things that are more complicated than that. And um, I think uh, Dame Judith was absolutely right to identify a cultural problem uh, within the supply chain. And that's why we've been uh, drumming on all morning about traceability, about transparency, about the documentation that you need to see, um, that you need to make sure that documentation <coughs> actually verifies what the person selling you the product says it does, and so on, and so on. Um, <clears throat> and there's a number of specific shortcomings that the Hackett Review identifies. quite a long list, actually, but I'll put three bullet points here. Um, the processes that drive compliance are weak and complex, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Competence across the system is patchy. Um, by system, I would mean building control, right through the supply chain is that the lack of understanding of some of these issues is, is concerning because it's a safety critical product, a safety critical system we're talking about here with people's lives at stake. Um, and the product testing, labeling and marketing regime is opaque and insufficient. Um, this is a challenge. We're dealing with a technical subject and as an industry, and we all need to get better at this, we need to present that technical subject in a clear, concise manner so that the layperson and the builder and the contractor can actually understand what we're talking about and have confidence in that. Now, part of this is uh, something that WPA has, has had in place for many years, but um, we've put a lot more emphasis on it post Grenfell because that is what people are asking for. And that is an interlocking system of independent approvals. And uh, they've actually each stage of this has been mentioned by a speaker as we've gone through this morning. So the first stage is for a flame retardant treatment. It may be an impregnation. It may be something integrated into a product and manufacturer, as David described to us earlier on. The WPA will carry out an independent assessment, verification, and hopefully approval of products. Um, we have a panel of independent experts, non-commercial, so people like BRE, Exova, and so on, who will look at the test data presented to support a particular uh, treatment type and say, yep, that's, that meets all the requirements and so on, and then we will issue a certificate of approval uh, for those products and saying these are the end uses, the applications, the field of application for which these products are approved. 
and, and you'll find a whole list of approved products on our website. So that's step one. Step two, uh, which has also been referred to, is the WPA benchmark scheme for the application of those products. So it's no good having a product that works in a laboratory if you don't, don't apply it properly. So step two is the application. The benchmark FR scheme is, uh, again, an independent auditor. There's one or two of WPA auditors here this morning. Um, we would go into a treatment operation and do a thorough audit of everything that they're doing and, again, hopefully approve that and provide some independent third-party assessment of the quality of what they're producing. Now, one thing I will say at this stage is that the WPA will only approve factory-controlled processes. Um, there are some products on the market which would claim that you could apply them on site. Uh, that may or may not um, be true. Uh, well, you can always apply them. The, the question is quality. And, and the, with this particular market, quality control is paramount. As you've already heard, the loadings, the retentions of the flame retardant chemical are paramount. If you don't get it right, then the test certificate carried out in the laboratory is meaningless. So factory production controls, in the opinion of the WPA, is absolutely essential, regardless of what type of chemical you're adding. So you've got an approved product. You've applied it properly. And then, because of the way the timber market is structured, you may well then sell that product onto a distributor and the distributor on to the end contractor. So how do we make sure that the distributor is doing things properly? And, and we've extended our benchmark FR scheme over the last year to accredited suppliers, where, again, the WPA auditor would go in and check all the things actually very similar to all the things that Stephen Cope has described, uh, and make sure that the document trail, the traceability, the transparency is all there, and that the end user is getting what the test certificate in, produced in the laboratory uh, actually claims, and that the whole thing holds together. So, just to sum up on that, the Hackett Review talks about the need for traceability and communication. It's what Dame Judith Hackett refers to as the golden thread, and we'll come back to that after lunch, it's keeping all elements of the supply chain connected together. So a product treated with a system that's independently approved by a method that's audited and approved and a product that's distributed through an accredited auditor, we can be sure that what goes on the market is fit for purpose. And mayors are a good example. They're obviously not the only one. The speakers this morning have all referred to WPA schemes. But I think uh, with mayors, you've got all of those elements in the picture that Stephen painted. So that's about quality assurance. Now, I just want to say a word. Dave actually referred to this at the very beginning of the morning. Uh, about competence, because as I said, Hackett also identified competence as an issue, and not just in the supply chain, but in the regulators. And the WPA, we had a, a dialogue with uh, local authority building control, actually going back nearly two years ago now, uh, talking to them about helping with training standards for building um, control officers. And then... Um, that has really accel accelerated in the last year. Um, and basically what we've done is to form a partnership uh, and a sponsor group to put together a whole raft of training resources for building control officers and policy management within LABC. Um, and it's really talking to them about all the things we've heard about this morning. Everything from terminology understanding how fires develop through to the different types of product that are available and what to look for to make sure that the right product ends up on the job. And this has got to be in everybody's interest because 
if companies like the ones you've heard this morning invest a lot of money in doing things right, we want building control to be able to spot that and put some value on it, because uh, ultimately we're all in business together. So this program is going on. Um, we've produced a range of learning materials. We're right in the middle at the moment with the help of Wood Campus uh, to develop uh, an online e-learning uh, training resource, CPD resource for building control. And the hope is that in the future, we'll be able to turn that around and, and offer it to the wider market as well. Uh, take the opportunity while we're talking about this to thank TTF because TTF are a, one of our sponsor group and um, indeed as a number of people who've stood here this morning are. <coughs> and then finally um, if you want to find out more about any of the subjects we talked about this morning uh, if you go to the Wood Protection Association website uh, woodprotection.org all of our um, technical documentation is available to download free of charge, everything from frequently asked questions uh, through to our full flame retardant manual, which is a very detailed guide uh, into how this industry operates. And you can always ring us up or email or whatever if you've got any questions. We're there to help as the saying goes. So on that note, thank you very much. <laughs>